Hi guys, my name is Peter and welcome to our channel. Today I'd like to show you a few modifications what I did for my Amiga A1200. Uh, it's already probably 2-3 weeks since I own it. In our previous video we did take it apart. Uh, after that I clean it. And uh, in the first glance everything looks inside pretty good. And uh, I start putting together and I recognize it. I mean, like right now, the Amiga sits on a flat uh, surface. I recognize that the gap between Amiga itself and desk is in the center, it's much neural than, than on the side. Pretty much the system, it bulged like that. I mean, uh, center, it's sunk. Why is that? Because if I flip it, you can see it's only four uh, rubber feet. I added two more different color I mean for now then eventually I will buy it uh, two sets of uh, original uh, one and uh, replace it those old ones the center one I have to trim it a little bit to compensate because this one is kind of uh, centered in uh, to, to make sure they are the same height but those center feeds I glue I installed it probably like a week ago or so and now when I'm putting a desk the system is flat then when I started putting it together, I recognized it, and even before I, I did that, I recognized my uh, power supply, it's a 220 instead of 110, because I bought a system from UK. And here in the United States, uh, mostly uh, outlet, it's a 110. I decided, since uh, I don't have any use with uh, 220 and converter, uh, inverter step up, I didn't find it. And I decided, well, let me crack it open and see if I can replace it or make it work with uh, one tail. And on Amigas, uh, 1200, 500, 600, pretty much they all come with similar power supply, but those power supply, they come in a few different models. One, it has a couple of screws, you, take, you can take it apart. Another one, like mine, is glued together. Since it's no use for me anyway, I decided, well, let me crack it open and see what's inside. And remember, if you saw my previous video, when I, I mean, that my first video, when I pulled it out, I just started laughing because the power supply is heavy as hell. When I crack it open, I did recognize it. Why? Let me show you. <laughs> you guys are gonna laugh right now. Yeah. The whole power supply, it's filled with epoxy. I mean, I mean, really, they, they did use it so much epoxy to fill it up the whole power supply that's why it's so freaking heavy anyway since it's they use it a really hard epoxy and actually over here i try to scratch it see if i can remove it then there's no luck it's a really heavy duty uh, i mean uh, epoxy i decided well i still have to work around uh to get the power supply and uh, there's a few options i can get on ebay for 50 60 dollars or so but then, of course, uh, I started digging through my boxes for all my projects and I found it. I got a couple ATX, Pico ATX power supply for PC. It's a micro uh, power supply. Pretty much it has all right voltage, what Amiga really needs. And it's really small. It's almost like two inch lengthwise, inch uh, width and how thick it is, you can see. It's pretty small. And uh, I decided, well, why not using this power supply? I mean, it's the right uh, voltage, smaller size, much more powerful because Amiga power supply, I believe those ones like 22 or 23 watts. On, from some models, they go up to almost 24 or something or so. But still, this guy, it's 120 watts. That's more than, than you really need if you run efficiently. Anyway, and I saw uh, some people using ATX power supply like that, putting an original box, I mean original brick. That idea I don't like because I still have a giant bricks with power switch on the system and uh, power supply itself. And that's not really convenient. I'd like, I prefer to have power uh, switch, power switch on the console itself, not on the brick. Plus, I mean, there's not really you saving any space by using the little guy inside the big brick. I decided, well, might as well I should put it inside. 
and in that case I am using that Pico ATX power supply plus a small AC DC charger it's a 12 volts 2 amp that's plenty enough it's running no problem also I do have a similar uh, that uh, style with 4 amp if I need more and basically I'd like to show you what I did inside let me open it uh, inside I did actually a few more modifications uh, when you open it, you guys know uh, you have to like, hold it, uh, top cover, then lift it, keyboard, disconnect it, your LED lights. LED lights right now I just remove it because I'm, I'm going to work on a case also. Pretty much uh, that keyboard from 1200, this is a vast extension metal with square a rectangle uh, opening hole. I cut it, that metal off completely. First of all, it's not really needed. Uh, because why I'm saying that because the keyboard will sit on a hard drive bracket and also on a bracket which mounted on a, a floppy drive. Yeah, pretty much it will not. It, that little piece of metal heel here it doesn't provide any support. It may somehow it provide a little bit more rigid, which I'm not really sure about that. But without that loop. It's easy to, I mean, you don't have to go uh, with wires through, and yeah. I mean, the LED lights, wires go through and then connect it. Pretty much, this is more, uh, this way it's more convenient. And then, uh, I'd like to show you the power supply, I mean, ATX Pico power supply the way I did. Let me pull it out. I mean, when I was start designing how it's gonna mount it, I decided, well, let me, make uh, with connectors with quick connectors that's mean i can disconnect it anytime when i need it and just lift it power supply itself and it it fits like that i mounted power supply itself on a cooling sink also because you bring the power supply inside you not make it only a uh, smaller size more convenient but you also bring in more heat inside and in that case I decided, well, I have to put it a cooling fan. Uh, cooling fan is, I believe it's a two inch cooling fan. I did kind of reshape it a little bit, that uh, a rectangle shaped hole to make sure the fan will, will work more efficient. It will not stop because there was kind of metal on the way and pretty much it will block some air. I cut it out to make sure the fan will work the, the more efficient as possible. And the power supply, like I said, I mean, you guys can see it, that a uh, little uh, ATX uh, Pico power supply mounted on a cooling sink. Cooling sink with two screws, I mounted on a bracket, uh, which is uh, quite convenient. If I need to replace the power supply, I can unscrew it and remove it. The cooling sink, I found it, it's from my old uh, sun power supplier. So really, re really, I mean, actually pretty good cooling sink, plus the right size. I mean, I don't have to even trim it, I don't have to do anything. It's the almost same width as, as a Pico power supply, which is really cool. Because if you mount it, just uh, power supply itself, especially inside in a closure, without fan, and it's gonna run really hot. And plus, I mean, it, your system will run quite hot also. By mounting on a cooling sink, and then added fan, it's run as much as much as efficient as possible. I mean, right now after even uh, four or five hours, the system inside runs at room temperature. It runs uh, some chips still in the 28 uh, high high 20s I should call, and some chip I build the video the processor is run in the 42 45 uh, Celsius, which which actually pretty good I should call. The system runs almost uh, cold as a cucumber. Anyway, uh, and, uh, oh, by the way, I'd like to show you a power supply. I mean, not power supply, power switch. When I was start working on a power unit, uh, start work, I started thinking, where is going to put it a uh, power switch? Since power supply is going on the uh, inside, on the bracket, there's no reason to make extension uh, power supply on the power, power brick, or anything, I, I have to put it inside. And the most convenient spot is right here. 
first when when the cover is on you not even can tell when you look at the straight on the uh, amiga itself you doesn't see the power of the power switch power series switches on the bottom it's really convenient it's really easy to just flip it on and off it turns really good i i, I mean i really like it the way i come out with that idea and basically then i start well since my system right now is running a compact flash card compact flash card actually i do recommend it it's really it's really good instead of working with hard drivers so the compact flash is probably the best way to go and of course with uh, compact flash i start thinking well how i can make more convenient more easy to access to uh, compact flash because i see a lot of people just put it inside and close good that means anytime when you want to edit files on that card or you want to use a different card because i do have a couple cards i just experimented with uh, workbench uh, uh, this is a, a classic workbench uh, full version i also have a 3.1 original i also have a 2.2.x uh, 2 or 2.1 whatever it is I just, just experimented and uh, see, see see what's a good or bad things i didn't see much different instead in only those older kicks of workbenches, of course, doesn't support uh, four gigabyte uh, partition. And that's a few, few other little, a little minor glitches, no big deal. But the idea is, I want to install it, uh, that's what I'm currently work, working. I want to install it this compact flash to make sure it will be easy accessible. I mean, in that case, I will not have to open it, especially when I'm done with all modification, I want to put all screws back and just leave it all the time and then close. Pretty much, I found a couple, uh, couple uh, adapters, uh, compact flash card adapter, which will sit inside and the card will face it to, the, uh, to my left, pretty much right about uh, a PCM or whatever the card is, the, the big one. It's going to be another slot and the card will go in. Or I found that another adapter uh, people sell on eBay, which you remove in that uh, expansion slot cap and install right here. It probably right here will be more convenient because then it will not stick uh, half an inch or so on the side, especially it will kind of see it. If, if I mount it right here, it will stick the same amount, but it will not noticeable as bad as on the side. That's my next project. Also, I'm working on uh, one more mod, and I'm gonna explain why I'm doing that. Pretty much, uh, when I start uh, working with my Amiga, kind of testing a few different things, I recognize that my floppy drive uh, doesn't, uh, I mean, it reads, but it will not uh, format it, or it will not delete anything from uh, uh, floppy disk, pretty much, it's something wrong. I take it apart, and there's a uh, micro switch, for recognizing if it's a uh, lock protection or not lock protection. I open it, I clean it. It was really pain about to open it, the switch because there's a couple of contacts, a couple of springs, they have, and they're so tiny and easy to lose it. I was able to clean it, repolish it, contacts, put it back, test it with voltmeter. Everything works fine. As soon as power it, put it disk, it will not recognize it. Anyway, uh, then I did some bunch of research, pretty much uh, going back and forth. I recognized this, I recognized that this uh, flash drive will not work the way I, I plan to. I'd like to see it. I'm start working on idea using a PC uh, camper. I mean a floppy drive. Pretty much right here. I'm gonna show you guys. I hope I mean camera will show. Anyway, uh, there's not much more. Uh, there's not much information on the internet if that uh, floppy drive will be compatible with uh, Amiga. You have to do some tweaks here. But then another thing, uh, even if you remove the dashboard plate, uh, that this guy, if you mount it on the same mounting position, it's slightly longer. You will have to trim it the housing from the, from upper portion. I mean the top housing. Probably like four, uh, three, three and a half millimeter. You have to trim it to make sure the cover will fit. Otherwise, you will have to cut it cover. And uh, that's like I said, my next mod, pretty much uh, floppy drive, 
and uh, compact flash I have to come up with some idea to make it it um, I mean a little bit more convenient anyway guys pretty much that's kind of like a little video my first video about modding uh, Mega uh, uh, 1200 if you guys saw my previous video you know me I'm that kind, of, that kind of guy, if I don't like it, I will modify it. If there is a something I'm looking for which does not exist, I will make it. I do like mods. <laughs> anyway guys, pretty much I hope you did enjoy this video. Also, I hope this video was helpful. Uh, maybe someone's gonna use it or some part. Anyway guys, if you do enjoy it, thumbs up. If you don't want to miss any future videos, subscribe. We will really appreciate it. If you want to share it, this video, feel... Uh, Feel free to do that. If you have any ideas, comments, uh, concerns, you know, or complaints, just leave it comments, and we we'll go from there. Thank you.